Hello and welcome to another episode of my Quest System series. In today's episode, we will implement the functionality to cancel current quests and we will also fix an error message that I'm going to show you now. So when you get your quest and let's select that in our journal, if we then try to complete our quest by killing our two spiders, one and two, then let's get our mystical cone and afterwards talk to Ram. If we select our quest again and hit exit, it says that there were some access none errors in our quest journal and that error we will fix as well. So let's get started. First off, we need to find a way to tell the NPC that gave us a certain quest that the quest was cancelled. So we can show the question mark again. What we'll do here is open up the master NPC and we will add another custom event down here, which will be called on own quest cancelled. So we will execute that when a quest is cancelled that was given to us by this specific NPC. We'll give it one input, just for the case that our NPC can have more than one quest. We'll also plug in the quest class and that will be a master quest class, obviously. What we will do here is just drag in our question mark and set the visibility back to visible. Then compile, save and we can close the master NPC already. The other thing we'll need to do is go to our blueprints, structures and open up the s underscore quest info because for every quest we want to define whether or not there is a client that gave us the quest, like the NPC, and if so, what ID and which class he has. So we will add three new variables. First one will be a boolean called has client question mark. Next one will be the client class, which will be a master NPC class. And the last one will be the client ID, which will just be an integer. Save it and close the quest info. Afterwards, we'll go to our blueprints folder, actors and open up the BP quest manager. In our quest manager, we have to keep track of all of the NPCs that are in our world so that later we can find the client and communicate with the client that we received the quest from. To do that, we will just add a variable called all NPCs in world. Type for that will be master NPC reference and we'll make it an array. Pile save. We'll add a new function called get all NPCs, which will just set up this array. And the only thing we'll have to do here is get all actors of class. Actor class will be master NPC. And maybe I should also mention that get all actors of class also means that we get all the child actors. So for example, Ram is a child class of master NPC and he will be returned as well here. And we'll just set the all NPCs in world to that. Afterwards return. Further, we need a function that searches for a specific NPC in our array and we will call that find NPC by ID. It will have two inputs. First is the class, which will again be a master NPC class. And then the ID, which will just be an integer again. Afterwards, we'll add two outputs. First one will be a boolean called found, so that we find anything. And if so, we will also return the NPC, which will then be a master NPC reference. What we will do here is get our all NPCs in Word and run for each loop with break. Now for every NPC, we want to check whether his class, so get class, equals the in class 
end. We also want to check whether the ID of the NPC equals the in ID as well. Connect that to the end and then we'll add a branch, connect the end to that, connect the loop body to the branch. If that's true, we will get the array element here and promote that to a local variable, local found NPC, something like that. Afterwards, we can break out of our loop. And when our loop is completed, we want to drag in our local found NPC and check for is valid. Because if it's not valid, we did not find anything. If it's not valid, just add a return node here with false and null. Copy over the return node and for is valid, we want to return true and our local found NPC. Compile, save. The other thing we'll have to do is go to our event graph and somewhere down here we will implement event begin play. Not much that we have to do here, but call our get all NPCs function to set up our array. And we will create one more function that we're going to implement later called cancel quest with one input of the type master quest reference, which we will just call quest actor, compile, save and close the BP quest manager. Afterwards, we will go to our blueprints, actors, quest actors, and open up the BP master quest. Here, we need one more function to fix our errors that are appearing and call that remove widgets. Because if we have a look at our complete sub goal function for a moment, we just remove the quest widget and list entry widget from parent. Problem is that we have arrays storing all of the quest widgets and all of the list entry widgets and they are not removed from the arrays which means that we try to access them though they are already removed from parent and not valid anymore. So we need a new function for that. What we'll do here is open up our do not touch category, get the quest manager, get the main widget and then get the quest widgets we will call remove item and the item to remove will be our quest widget after we did that we want to drag off of the main widget get the journal widget and then get the all quest entries because here we want to remove an element as well remove item and this time it will be the list entry widget. After we remove both of them from the arrays we can then call remove from parent, connect that to the execution and we will plug in the list entry widget and the quest widget as the target. Then we'll open up our complete sub goal function and here instead of calling remove from parent we will call remove widgets before ending the quest. Then we'll head over to the event graph and add one more custom event here, which we will call on quest cancel. Here what we'll do is call remove widgets. Afterwards drag in the quest manager and call cancel quest. Quest actor here will just be a reference to ourselves. Compile and save, close our BP master quest, go to our widgets and open up the quest journal because here our cancel quest button does not do anything yet but we want to change that so select it, add an on clicked event, drag in the selected quest and call on quest cancel. That's everything for our quest journal save and close it. Now the final thing will be to go to our actors and implement the cancel quest function here. I'll just promote it to a local variable first called local quest just so that you don't 
get confused by the amount of wires. Also, we want to drag in our current quest actress and remove item, connect the local quest to that. And now we have to worry about the case that the quest we are about to cancel is currently selected. You might remember that we also do that in our end quest function and so we can copy over some bits. Open that up and right here where we go into the first branch we will select everything. All of this, this one, the next branch and up until on quest clicked. Copy that and paste it here. Then we'll move it over and remove the local quest here. Drag in our local quest and we will go to the right here. Again drag in our local quest and connect that to selected in journal. All right, the next thing will be to check whether there is a client for this quest and if so tell him that his quest was cancelled. So drag in local quest, we will get the quest info and break that. Here in our pin options we will disable all of them except for the last three. Add a branch off of the has client and we'll connect it to the true path and the false path of our last branch. If we have a client we will try to find npc by id Class comes from a client class and ID from a client ID. Off of the found, we will add another branch. And if we found something, we will drag off of the NPC and call on own quest cancelled. Here we need to plug in the class, so let's just drag in the local quest once again. Get class connected. So we, we worried about that as well. And then drag in our all quest classes, remove item, which will be the get class again. And we want to connect the remove to the true path here, the false path of the last branch, and then go back to the right. And off, off of the has client branch, we will also connect the false path. Okay, so we'll definitely remove it from the all quest classes. And after we did that, we can just drag in our local quest and destroy the actor because we don't need it anymore. And if we add the quest again, a new actor will be spawned. Then return. And that's basically everything we had to do for our function. Right here it says the execution path doesn't end with the return node, is not valid. So we will just connect the is not valid to the branch selected in journal. I think I forgot to copy that from our end quest function. Compile, save, that's it. The only thing left before we can test is to set up our quest. So open up the test quest one. And down here, we want to check has client. The client class is master npc and the client id is zero. If we scroll down here, we have robo selected. It says id zero. Compile, save, and let's test it. So if I get my quest here, the question mark disappears from our minimap. I can open up the journal, expand the current quests and hit cancel quest. See it was removed and Robo has a question mark again. If I talk to him once more, I'll get it back. If you still have errors with the update suggested level color, just drag in the selected quest and we will add an is valid check. If it's not valid, we'll just return. If it is valid, go to the set color node. And if we play now, get a quest. Kill our spiders. Actually select it. And I hit escape. There will be no errors left. Alright, so that's working. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.